The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time is just one of those special games that grows on you as you get older and gain the capacity to think about it in more complex ways. When I was a kid, I kind of hated due to a variety of factors. I watched a lot of YouTubers who claimed it was overrated because they felt they had to justify liking it less than their favorite Zelda game. Which usually ended up being the Wind Waker since they all grew up in the early 2000s, and I also just played the game way too many times. I became so familiar with it that it ended up feeling standard to me. Like something that was a completely known quantity. And as I've gone over before on this channel, that feeling of emptiness in a game is one of the worst things that can come over you. However, I've written about my personal emotional journey with Ocarina of Time before, so I'd like to go into more detail about what exactly made me fall in love with it again. Ocarina of Time resonates a lot more with the player once it's been played in adulthood, especially if you've already played it as a kid. It isn't just the standard Zelda game, it's a powerful story about the nature of growing up itself that you finally have the life experience to truly understand. Link, our hero, starts the journey as a child and becomes an adult both literally and figuratively, with the trials and tribulations that you face throughout the game being representations of this journey itself in hauntingly beautiful ways. It's the story of maturing into a harsh world, one where a single failure can completely destroy you, and inevitably overcoming that. You go from the lush Kokiri forest, which coddle you, to finding friends in the hostile mountains, to going deep inside the belly of a whale. These are all ultimately whimsical scenarios, added to by the fact that as a child exploring the world is encouraged and wonder abounds. You meet a baby horse and make her love you. Cartoonish skeletons come out of the ground at night in a gigantic, beautifully green and sprawling field. Come up with a special song to share with a scarecrow. Everything about the childhood sections is just fun. Characters are kind and understanding, if a bit rude sometimes. Aside from the obviously delineated and evil Ganondorf, but he is rarely seen. However, once you place the three spiritual stones in the Temple of Time and acquire the Master Sword, Link becomes an adult and everything changes. The world is literally thrust into an apocalypse. Upon leaving the Temple of Time as an adult for the first time, you immediately find Hyrule Castle Town. Your hub for the game's first few hours has been completely demolished and its people replaced with zombies. You become aware of the world's troubles more intimately. The forest that once cobbled you is now abandoned, the friends you made in the mountains victims of a genocide, and the whale you ventured into dead. You find yourself discovering the gruesome secrets behind the political figures that you had grown to put your faith in through the bloody history of Hyrule learned in the haunted halls of the Shadow Temple, and learning that the religions and cultures you had come to vilify, such as the Gerudo, were not as evil as you thought as they become allies to you against Ganondorf. Everything is more complicated than it appears on the surface when you were a child, because of your increased perspective as an adult. It all culminates in coming to terms with a society that simply does everything in its power to ensure that you do not exist. However, things do eventually end up getting better. You master the apocalyptic world of adulthood and learn its rules. You find the tools that you need to succeed, even if they're metaphorically represented as chain hooky things and bows and arrows. The horse you found as a foal has become a full-grown adult who will ride with you to the ends of the earth. The skeletons that once rode the fields at night have now disappeared and made the land tranquil. The scarecrow you created a song with will now come to your aid whenever you play that song as a way to help you get to places you couldn't before. What you learned as a child and as an adult coalesced into a beautiful synergy, one that allows you to take on any challenge that the terrible world of adulthood chooses to throw at you, be that demon kings or even something as mundanely human as getting someone his eye drops on time. Every time you play, you feel like you're truly embodying the adult Link. You feel you've moved past the silly idealism of Child Link, the one who thinks that the world can be saved through his pluckiness alone. You look back at all your past selves and think that you're the ultimate version of you, the one who has truly mastered all that life has to offer. And yet, the next playthrough, you see that last playthrough just as foolish as the ones that came before it. It's a game that creates infinite retrospection in its design, one that encourages it and dissects it and analyzes it wordlessly through the subtext of aging. Ocarina of Time as a story is fundamentally about the process of growing up. You go through the ease of childhood before being slapped in the face by adulthood and eventually mastering the required tools to fight back against it, all while seeing how far you've come since the last time you went on this journey. Like all things in life, it's ultimately cyclical. This journey of self-growth is not something you're done with at any point. It's a Sisyphusian battle to keep progressing even when the boulder occasionally slides back. There's reason this game is seen as timeless and will always apply to the human condition. And that's something truly special. This has been Arcade Everlasting, who ended up really disappointed by Wind Waker due to all the hype from random early 2010s YouTubers signing off. Thank you for watching.